We are what? Enslaved. 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 And the reason we're enslaved is because all of our life-sustaining institutions are controlled by whites. That's slavery. That's slavery. I will guarantee you, there's nobody in this room can tell me where, the, uh, where you turn your water on at or where you turn your lights off at. I ain't talking about in your house. Because <laughs> they can turn your lights off without even coming in your house. All of our life-sustaining institutions are controlled by another group. That is slavery. That is slavery. Now, I'm not telling you all, you all of this to, to depress you. Remember, I want to ask, it's not hard edition, it's... Hard edge edition, right. That's my boy. Boy? Shit, I'm a man. What? I've always been a very independent person. Always believed in individuality and that we were put on this earth to be uh, unique individuals to fulfill our God-given potential. And that uh, the only way to fulfill your potential is to be free, to find out who you are, and to make your errors, to make mistakes. And as, I, as uh, I grew up, I began to realize more and more the government was inhibiting me in things that I wanted to do. They did not want to free blacks, as I said to you a few minutes ago. What they wanted to do was to disorganize the South, by giving the pretense that somehow black folk were free. So here's what, here's what your good esteemed president, Abraham Lincoln, did. <clears throat> In the Emancipation Proclamation, what he said was this, I now hereby declare all the blacks who are in the Confederacy as slaves as now being free. Now, listen to his logic. <clears throat> He's in the North with the Union, and the South is the Confederacy, and what he says is now all the blacks who are in the Confederacy, on, this, on the group that's broken away from the United States, y'all are free over there. Now see somebody's front light, that porch light was on, but nobody's upstairs at home. Now, now I, I think that gets to figure the whole world was stupid. If you in fact, if they've broken away from you and that's your enemy, you're fighting, how are you gonna free somebody that you don't have any control over? So they had no, no control over those people. So he didn't free anybody in the Confederacy. He did not free that order, the Emancipation Proclamation, did not free any slaves because the, 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 the slaves he was talking about weren't even in the Union up north. They were in the south, so he didn't free them. I believe that we are stronger than other group of people. What we have been led to believe is that we are super people. We are not super people. We are simply just not utilizing, utilizing the appropriate methods to address this problem. The average black business can't even get the capital to present itself to the black population that the other people can get the capital to do. Now one would ask the question, how can all these poor immigrants come to this country and have all this capital? If they had that capital, why did they leave home? And if they didn't have the capital when they left home, how are they getting this capital here when they have no credit records and they have no paper trail? And they have not, so who's capitalizing them? And I think if we begin to look at that question, we begin to get the, to the bottom of what's going on in the black community. See, and you cannot, you cannot, it's impossible in theory and practice to acquire wealth and power or to be economically competitive without a community. And right now in America, black folk do not have not one single solitary community in America. You cannot prosper, you cannot compete. It's gonna be very difficult for black folk even to survive under the present circumstances because they don't have communities. All black folk got are neighborhoods. A neighborhood is like a bucket with a hole in it. A neighborhood is where you eat and sleep. A community is where you store your values, your history, your wealth, your power, your resources, your jobs, your tax base. And most of these neighborhoods have gotten so bad, so crime-ridden and run down and so dysfunctional that the neighbor has moved and all you got left is a hood. There's nothing left in them. We, we have a ranking order of acceptability in our society based on skin color going white, yellow, brown, black. It's in a descending color order, going from the whitest to the darkest. And the wealth is also distributed along the same lines. The whitest at the top got the wealth, power, and resources going down. It trickles down, all the way down. The power and resources go, as they go up and down, the further you go away from the white, the, the thinner it becomes, the weaker it becomes. And black folk are not that silly. <clears throat> they can say, consequently, if I want something, I'm gonna try to identify with anything as close to white as possible. And that's why you come up with this saying all the time about white ice is colder than black ice. They want to identify with it. But they never have to understand that rather than identify with it, why don't you go acquire your own? 
then you can have, then you can have, then your, your, your black ice would be just as cold as white ice. And the biggest Indian tribe in the United States, the Cherokee tribe, that picks up in terms of reparations. They pick up something like about, you got about 155,000 Cherokee Indians out there to get 170,000, 770 million dollars a year in reparation funds. So Indians are getting all kinds of reparations. Indians have been getting reparations through treaties now, through land and free everything now for 200 and some years. Black folk have got nothing because you went the wrong way. You cannot sit there and want to be a part of white society and try to, and that's exactly what the game they want you to play. Rather than say, no, I'm a separate nation. You have problems, you owe me just like you owe the Indians. The Indians should be your model. Give the white man and the white woman their filthy ways back. And we won't have to worry about it. And we will give them their practices back. And we will go back to our natural godlike state and our Afrocentric way of living the way we lived before they came among us. Here's the story of how Pharaoh drove the white folk out of Egypt. Pharaoh Amos, Amos drove the Hyksos, the invaders, out. The Europeans went and saw this story and turned it around and said that here is where Pharaoh's army got drowned. That's not Pharaoh's army. Look, do, you see Pharaoh there with his arrow? He's, he's, he's killing some folk. He ain't trying to swim. <laughs> These are the people who's being drowned. See they're turned upside down? In the next clip you see it too. They're being turned all upside down. So see, Africans, what they did is they put their story in stone. So you hear Pharaoh driving the Hyksos into Nakus River and they're being drowned and the Europeans copied that and made it. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, this is the good one. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I got to show you this. Here you have, and again, this is at the Temple of Ramses III. Those who go with us next year, you'll see this. Here you have Ramses sitting on the throne. And he prays and he asks God for wisdom as to how to rule his kingdom. So what does God do? God sends him a woman. Y'all missed that one. <laughs> he prayed to God for wisdom to rule his kingdom. So God sent him a woman. Her name is Shanu. And here, Shanu reaches up to grab this fruit from the tree. See the tree? <laughs> to give him fruit from the tree of knowledge. Y'all see it, don't you? This is what I mean by evidence, y'all. See, when, when you see it like that, and you understand how they stole it, ain't nothing else to be said. She gives him fruit from the tree of knowledge. The Europeans turned it all around and made this Eve giving Adam forbidden fruit. Now, the woman in this case is not the cause of his fall. In this case, the woman is the cause of his success. A lawyer that uh, I worked for before and after school, I can still remember his name, Gag Steider, and I asked him for a book about my people in early world history. He says, I'm sorry, John, that uh, you came from a people that have no history. My mind would not accept that. I continued to search, and I opened a book called The New Negro, and I opened to an essay called The Negro Digs Up His Past. And for the first time, I knew that I came from a very old people, that we were older than slavery, older than oppression, older than Europe. Now the scramble began. 
for more information. Back in the 60s, one of my students who was Fred Hampton used to ask me, interrupt my class all the time, because we had these free classes, and call it community university. And he used to ask, why are we like we are? Why is history demanding too much of us? That was his famous say, Why are black folks like that we are? Is history demanding? And I used to tell him, and, I, you know, and I'm going back to that now because I've gotten too far from it. It's very simple. We are in a race war. And we are the only ones who don't know it. 